Hey everyone, it's TJ, the Stereo Bargain Foul, and I am very pumped up today because today I'm going to be having my part two pop in the hood video of the Triangle Esprit Easy Comet two-way stand mount speakers. Now, uh, first and foremost, through the rest of this part two pop in the hood video, I'm going to call the Triangle just the Triangle Esprit. Now, basically, this video today is going to pick up right where I left off on part one of popping the hood video which basically this video today I'm going to talk about the experience that I have with using no res that's right using no res no res is basically a, a dampening material for loudspeakers and what this dampening material is used for is for inside of our speaker cabinets now inside of our speaker cabinets a lot of acoustic energy gets built up and this no res material that I actually bought from GNR Research, which is down in the description box, I will upload GNR Research link. And basically, this no res comes in uh, some pretty big sheets. Now, here, just to show you all real quick, is a piece of no res that I have already hacked up. Now, this no res actually comes in 24 inch by 27 inch squared pieces. Those pieces weigh about four pounds each, and they cost $48 in, I think, 90 or 95 cents U.S. Now, I actually had to order two sheets because the Triangle Esprits, they're pretty good size speakers. Now, each uh, Triangle Esprit speaker cabinet, I used about 75% of each sheet of no-res. So, I loaded up about three pounds of no-res in my speaker cabinets. Now, this no res is some really thick, dense foam. As you can see, it's about one inch thick. Now, this comes in big sheets, and the only way you can get this no res inside of your speaker cabinet, well, most speaker cabinets, is actually, for me, with the Triangle Spree, I had to take out the mid-range driver. So, yes, I had to cut up a bunch of small pieces to fit inside. Now, when I put this no res inside, of my triangle of spurry, uh, I actually cut up six medium sized pieces about this big. Basically, I had to cut a piece for the top, I had to cut a piece for the bottom, and I cut two different pieces for the side. I had one piece at the bottom side and one piece at the top side. And I kind of had to fold it over and go inside the speaker cabinet. Now, one thing that is really awesome about this no res material is on the back, we have this. Um, medium dense medium density backer board that's made out of plastic then you have your wax paper and it's really sticky on the other side so when you make your cuts make sure you leave that paper on you know while you're moving it around inside your speaker cabinet when you get it close to the area that you're going to lay it down then go ahead and take it off because this is a really sticky material but basically i had to cut six big pieces and one medium sized piece for the very back top now on the back bottom inside the speaker cabinet i had a crossover so i cut a bunch of little bitty pieces maybe three inch by one inch and went all the way around the crossover so basically i covered everything inside the speaker cabinet except for the front baffle in the front but one thing i want to go over real quick before i talk about the pros that i had using the no res and the caveats that I had using the no res. One thing I want to go over with you all real quick is that it is really important that you're smart about making your cuts put inside your speaker cabinet because you don't want to take a lot of volume away inside. So I'm going to tell you all just real quick what I did. First thing I did was I cut the top piece and I cut the bottom piece of no res to put inside my speaker cabinet. Now, when I done this measurement of all the top and the bottom, of course, it was the same size. But what I did after I got my full measurement, you know, a piece about this big, I actually took an inch off the sides. I took a, you know, an inch off. So say our pieces, I'm sorry, y'all, say our pieces like this. I took an inch off the top, I took an inch off the side, and I took an inch off the bottom. Then when I put the no res in on the bottom, I made sure I squared it up when laying that piece down. This way I had an inch gap all the way around on the inside. And the reason why I done this is because the no res is at one inch 
thick. So let me show you real quick. So basically what I have here is some of my uh, acoustic little rubber pieces I use for my heavy amp. Now let's say this is the bottom piece. Just hypothetically, this is the bottom piece of no rest I'm putting inside my cabinet. Now since I left a one inch gap all the way around, when I put in my bottom side piece of no rest, it will, you know, snug right in between where I had that little bitty gap. Now when I do the other side, it's going to be the same thing. That one inch gap, the no res will fit right in between. Right in between the actual speaker cabinet and the no res on the bottom. Now this gives me more volume. Now if I would have cut, cut one piece for the bottom and it was the entire size of the bottom of the cabinet, now when we put our side pieces of no res on, we have to set the no res on top of the no res. And as you can see, we lost volume. So be smart with your cuts. Leave that one inch gap and you can go to the outside of the no res and it will snug in and keep that volume size uh, as much as you possibly can because this is going to help with better bass. But enough of me rambling about that. I just want to give you all that quick heads up. So now let's go and talk about my personal uh, experience I had with using no res from GNR Research with my Triangle Esprit, a, book, a two way stand mount speaker that I absolutely love. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to try this no res out. I wanted to try a little modification. So first, I'm going to go over the, pro, the pros that I had using the no res. And this is my strong, subjective, humble opinion. Now the pros I had with the triangle of sprees adding the no res, first, I noticed the low end gained a little bit more weight, even at low volumes. And this was welcome. No, I'm not going to say it gained a whole lot of weight in the low end, but it gained a little bit, just a little bit more weight. Now, that was highly welcomed. You know, in my initial review of the Triangle of Spree, I told you all that on very low listening volumes, I wish there was just a little bit more weight in that low end. You know, in my initial review before the no res, because it reminded me of what people say about the Bucart S400 stand mount speakers. And that you got to give them a little bit of volume for them to wake up. But once they wake up, they rock out. I mean, these triangle sprees have always rocked out. But it was really nice gaining just a little bit of weight in the low end. Another thing that I noticed was the mid bass uh, has a little bit more impact. Again, just a little bit. That mid bass, I could tell there was a little bit more of that impact. Now, when it comes to the mid body, the top end, well, the tonality and texture of the Triangle Esprit is one of its strong points. But now, having a quieter speaker cabinet with the no res added, I can hear, you know, the micro details are more apparent. And I can easily, one of the number one pros I noticed is I could easily hear deeper into the sound stage. So yes, I got a little bit better depth with the no res. I also got a little bit better layering with the no res, which really helped me to have better localization in the sound stage of the singer and the musicians, or you know, the, the singer and the instruments. And um that was one thing that was really huge to me, was the actual depth of the sound stage that I got. Now, when I get up into the top end, I still get that amazing detail refinement that I got before from the Triangle Asprey's. But now, the, the details are just a little bit more precise and a little bit more accurate with the no res added. I also, the male and female vocals sounded a little bit uh, clean and clear, just a little bit clearer overall. Now that is my strongly subjective, humble opinion of the pros. I mean, doing this modification, when I added the no rest, this wasn't a modification. When I first turned it on, you know, it wasn't like, do I hear a difference? I think I hear a difference. I don't know, do I hear a difference? No, after, new th after this modification, it was instant that I heard a distance. But that was the pros that I have using the no res with the triangle sprees. 
Now, real quick, let's talk about the caveats that I had with the no risk. Now, I have to mention this. I think it's very important to mention this. But one of the first things I noticed that was a caveat was that uh, with the no res added to the triangle of spree, I noticed that I was about a half a dB down or a quarter dB down. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, to make it simpler for you all to understand, I'm going to say it like this. The triangle uh, triangle rated the triangle of spree at 90 dB efficient. And now, after adding that no res, it's about 89 and a half dB efficient. Yes, this speaker is easy to drive. Now, when the triangle uh, rated this speaker at 90 dB efficient, I do think that was a really modest rating that they gave it because this speaker is easy to drive. But using the no res, I did notice I was about a half a dB to a quarter dB down, meaning it took a little bit more volume to get that same sound level that I was getting before without using the no res. So using the no res did pull just a little bit more power. That really wasn't a caveat for me. Basically to me, I think it's because the speaker cabinet is more grounded now and the, the cabinet isn't as lively sounding as before. Now I will say I'm not taking anything away from the engineers at Triangle. They've done an awesome job with the speaker cabinet also. This speaker cabinet isn't a half inch thick MDF board. It isn't three quarters of an inch MDF board. It is actually 0.827 of an inch MDF board. So it's almost an inch thick. And not only that, uh, Triangle actually used a lot of acoustic uh, filling, polyfill, inside their speaker cabinet. Now there was a piece that covered the whole top also, and Triangle glued in this polyfill really good. So the speaker cabinet wasn't ever overly lively sounding. I just wanted to mention that, but adding the no res, it did give the speaker cabinet uh, I would say a darker sound. It's not as lively sounding as before. Now let's get into the second caveat. To me this really wasn't a caveat but I thought it was worth mentioning again and I'm basically calling this the illusion. That's right y'all I'm calling it an illusion because when I first started listening to the triangle of spree with the no res added I was like does this sound warmer? Does this have a, a warmer character overall? And you know, it's not that it really sounded warmer than what it did before without the no res. It's just with the no res added, again, the speaker cabinet isn't as lively sounding. And I will tell you all, a lot of uh, people out there do like a speaker cabinet that does have a livelier sound character to it. I actually reached out to another YouTube reviewer out there who actually, stereo reviewer, who actually likes a speaker cabinet that has a livelier sound. So I reached out to him and I was like, can you explain to me why you like a speaker cabinet that sounds more livelier? And basically, this is what he told me. He's like a livelier speaker cabinet to, to him. He gets uh, out of the playback. He gets more emotion, more energy. There's more excitement. And overall, he feels like there's better air in the sound stage. Now, I really didn't notice any of that. I will say, with the no res, it's not as airy sounding as it was before. I did notice that. But I think it's just, it's, it's not as, you know, as lively sounding as it was before. It has a darker sounding cabinet. But I do understand, you know, where people who do like a livelier speaker cabinet, I do understand where they're coming from. Because one thing I did notice was like the reverb and decay, uh, which is basically, um, say you have, a, say I have exophone inside of me, and I got, you know, and an exophone is basically has these little metal plates. They start out small and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And say I have some tongs right here in front of me, just hypothetically, or sticks, and I come down and I hit one of those metal plates. Well, you have that initial bing, and say it makes a bing sound like that. Well, on that initial hit, that decay, that, that ring that comes off those those trailing decays, what I call them, that reverb of music coming out into the room before the no res, 
of the decay did was drawn out a little bit further. And no, it wasn't overly drawn. But after using the no res, it was still drawn out good, but it didn't draw out as far. And like I said before, using the no res, it wasn't overly drawn out. But before using the no res, that, that decay was a little bit more accurate overall. So, you know, to me, before, you know, using the no res, the top end to me was a little bit livelier. It was a little bit crispier. Where now the top end to me, you know, it is more precise, more accurate. It, it, it's not as lively as before. But there will be people out there that do like a livelier speaker cabinet. So the thing is, I had a subscriber ask me, he's like, TJ, by your opinion, will you let us know on a percentage, you know, how much more you liked using the no res or how much you didn't like using the no res? Will you put that on a percentage overall? Now, if I had to personally put this on a percentage overall, basically, I spent about $120 US on the no res. It took me about five hours of fun of adding the no res inside the speaker cabinet. And to me, in my subjectively strong opinion, I gained three to 5% advantage in using the no res. I mean, one of the things that, you know, got me, you know, right off the bat was how deep I could hear into the soundstage. I got a little bit better depth, a little bit better layering, a little bit localization of the singers and the musicians or the instruments out in the soundstage. I mean, it was just like, boom. I was like, whoa. And, um, but anyways, that, that was the biggest pro for me. The second biggest pro would have been I gained a little bit of weight down in the low end but you know the no res to me and in my opinion it done its job it really done its job now the no res won't be for everyone but i think it could be for a lot of people out there now i do think using no res on like a speaker like the clips reference premiere 600 monitor speaker which i have the clips reference premiere 160 monitor speaker and that is a much livelier sounding speaker cabinet. I think I would have got more of a performance gain with a speaker like that instead of a speaker like the Triangle Spurry Easy Common. But I did, overall, in my opinion, got 3 to a 5% gain in performance using the no res. So for me, yes, it was worth using the no res. I've had a lot of fun with it. So somebody I know is going to ask me, TJ. Would you recommend no res? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I actually will leave that up to you because everybody has different, you know, subjective of when it comes to sounds. So I will leave it up to you if you want to choose to use no res. I've had a lot of fun with it. Again, my personal opinion, I gained 3 to 5% performance using the no res. And uh, that pretty much wraps this up. One last thing I want to say to you all is please don't judge a speaker by what its tweeter looks like. Until next time, this is TJ, the Stereo Barber Spout. And before I forget, before I forget, let's do the knuckle test because the speaker cabinet is filled with some no rest. So this knuckle test is for you all. Oh, I'm glad I didn't forget that. Here we go with the knuckle test. This speaker cabinet is grounded. Let's do the sides. As you can see, the no res done its job. Until next time, this is TJ, Stereo Bargain Bag.